Hi, I'm Dr. Jennifer Walden. I'm the immediate past president for the Aesthetic Society, or the American Society for Aesthetic Plastic Surgery. I'm a board certified plastic surgeon in Austin, Texas, with medical spas in both Austin and New York. I decided early on, I always excelled at science. I always was great, like anatomy, physiology, how things work, the human body. And so early on in like eighth grade, uh, we were dissecting pigs. And I was with one of my best friends who was my science partner and we, we had the pig in the tray and we had pinned down and I started to open it, right? I was just like scalpel. And I opened it up and started to pin down the organs. She fled the scene. She was like, oh my God, this is so gross, I'm leaving. So she's still one of my dearest friends and a patient of mine, but she let, fled the scene and I just kept going and I finished before anyone else did. So my eighth grade science teacher, Ms. Keck, came up to me and said, you're gonna be a surgeon when you grow up. So early on in high school, I did anatomy and physiology classes and, and advanced placement and I always excelled in those. In college, I went to the University of Texas at Austin um, I majored in biology in the College of Natural Sciences, and again, what I found was interesting to me was vertebrate physiology. So one of the hardest classes was in our senior year, and everybody was afraid of the teacher, everybody was afraid of the class itself. It was one of those, it was high flunk rate, and I got an A in it. And to get an A in this class was like a badge of honor, and so once I did that, I just had the confidence. Towards the end of college, I ended up getting waitlisted in uh, medical school. Um, so don't get your hopes down if that actually happens. I got called in in late August and I was like, yes, heck yes, I'm gonna go. So I went to University of Texas Medical Branch in Galveston, which ends up being um, a, a, a great place for the trajectory of my career. So I matched into an integrated plastic surgery program there after medical school. At the end of my residency, when I matched into this fellowship, this was just when neurotoxins were coming on the market in America. And I, I was really a kid in a candy store. I started to use these products, understand them, and I foresaw a boom in the aesthetic market. I thought this is only gonna get bigger with the minimally invasive and non-invasive. I also just liked the immediacy of results. So if you know me, you'll know and my staff know if I want something, I want it now. I had two key mentors, but I feel like they were, they were the foundation for my success. So um, you really stand on the shoulders of giants in this field. Um, and the first one was Linda Phillips. She was the chairman of my plastic surgery division at UTMB in Galveston, but she was also the dean of the medical school. She had four children. Um, she was married. She, she, she took her kids to swim practice. And mentors really, um, they, they go to bat for you at times when you need them, and she's always been there for me. But I've known her since I walked into her office as a junior medical student. My second mentor that's been very key in my life is Dr. Sherelle Aston. He's in New York City. So when I matched into the Manhattan Eye, Ear and Throat Aesthetic Fellowship, he was the chairman. It was in New York that I really, really um, solidified my passion for aesthetic plastic surgery and learned the, the foundational skills to perform it. And we did a lot of facelifts, eyelid lifts, otoplasty, rhinoplasty in that fellowship. Dr. Aston was my senior associate for seven and a half years in New York until I gave birth to my twin sons. But he really taught me the business of plastic surgery how to run a practice, um, how to communicate with patients, um, how to deal with staff, um, and, and try to maintain those relationships. And it was through that I was able to come to Austin and build a practice here. He really helps me, and um, he, he's, he's like almost like a coach, where if I have a hard case, I can call him up and we'll look at a picture together, we'll draw on the iPhone, and he'll coach me to success. So he's been a, a key foundational mentor in my career. Initially, I had a little trepidation about being the first female president in an organization of 56 year history that since its inception was male dominated. I quickly learned I was being evaluated on my decision making capabilities and leadership qualities. Being a woman was irrelevant. So that was a wonderful thing for me. So during my presidency, I had three main goals. And during that time, one of it was to enhance inclusion and diversity. So we established a mentorship program through our Aesthetic Society Research Foundation. We're trying to enhance patient safety and we're trying to better the specialty for everyone. Everyone is doing aesthetics. Everyone is injecting. 
we've got to be safe. There are real complications. And it's those cores that we're the ones that are doing the studies. We're the key opinion leaders. So it's important that the dermatologists, the facial plastic surgeons, and our board certified plastic surgeons um, of American Board of Plastic Surgery are banding together for the betterment and the safety of the population within America. Some of the limitations I placed on myself early in my career and some of the pressures that maybe um, when you're in a male-dominated field you feel in training and, and through your early um, practice is that you have to delay childbearing. Especially, you know, when I was in training, I think things have gotten more female friendly as time has gone on. And, and men, we have great male mentors. I have a wonderful male mentor. Men have realized that is a part of wholeness of a female plastic surgeon. And that's what draws patients to you, right? You're a mom and you know what that's like. But the delay in childbearing, you know, I, I waited until, um, really I waited until my late 30s. And by the time I decided that I, I, I wanted to have children, I kept putting it off thinking, no, I've got to do fellowship. No, I've got to start a practice. No, I've got to have this many patients. No, I've got to have this much. Um, and there was always something else that I had to focus on. I'm not, I'm not great at focusing on two major things at once. So I would always focus back on that. But the delay in childbearing was hard because I, I ended up kind of, um, you know, went to the ob -GYN. They said, like, if you're gonna have children, you really, really need to do it like now. And here I was in New York and didn't have a partner or anything. I did IVF and I had my twin sons in 2010, Houston and Rex. And, and they really are the lights of my life. And they really, they really changed it for the better. So um, my professional development is ha enhanced because of them. I became a mature per more mature person because of them as, you know, any parent, it does. You you can't control that part of your life, and so I would say just don't limit yourself and 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 have your family um, when you want to on your own time frame. And I think the residency program directors are much more um, friendly to that notion and that idea nowadays. I think it's important not to to be too latched on um, or too attached to people that take your mental energy. So one thing I can do, I think in many search and studies, we can compartmentalize well. And I think you need to compartmentalize your, your, your practice, your family, that, and you can walk away at the end of the day at 5.05, if you go home, you don't have to be upset if a patient was mad at you. You can you you want to try to focus on, on the good. Surround yourself with people that support you, whether it's colleagues or your friends and your staff. Sur surrounding yourself with people that love you and support you will enable your success. So um, when I became the first female president of the Aesthetic Society, Lynn Damitz in North Carolina, a plastic, wonderful plastic surgeon who's the leader of that group, invited me to come speak. And she gave me this necklace. What it is, it's a, it's a little cracked glass ceiling. And the reason I'm known for that is kind of obvious, but at the end of our business meeting, the year I became president, one of the things I did is you have to ask for any new business. And I said, is there any new business? And very quickly, I said, this meeting is adjourned and this glass ceiling is broken. And that was it. Then this meeting is adjourned and this glass ceiling is broken.